I don't know how many of you all realize this, but Madman Izuku, it's officially canon now. Gentle even says that Izuku is crazy, like he's mad, like straight madness, crazy, I don't want to fight this kid, let's get the hell out LeBron, and I'm like, did, did, did that just get confirmed? Because, like, that's a big thing in the community, in the Boku no Hero Academia community, just FYI, if this is your first time hearing it, in certain parts of the community, many have talked about how Izuku is, in a way, a madman. He, he is an absolute madman. No, not mad lad, madman. And the man just, he goes crazy. He goes all in. And just seeing how Gentle and La Brava were aware of Izuku's feats, that made me laugh. I, I got a good laugh from that, I'm not gonna lie, because, like, they don't know... They don't know Izuku by the situation with Overhaul. They don't know Izuku by, you know, the villain, you know, uh, the League of Villains. He only knew Izuku, uh, Gentle and Labrava only knew Izuku through the sports festival where he shattered his hands. And I'm just like, are you serious right now? Like, Izuku's being remembered by breaking his hands. Like, even villains, like a villain. Now, Gentle, obviously, he's not like a heinous individual, like, let's say, Shigaraki, you know, all for one. Or, you know, for, like, you know, overhaul. But regardless, though, Gentle is kind of, in a way, a villain. And for him to even know about Izuku, and for him to kind of just say, like, I don't want to fight this man. Let's get the hell out of here. He's crazy. I'm just, like, I'm dying. People are knowing about this man through his craziness, his straight resolve and madness. So let's talk about that for a second, okay? I mean, if I was Gentle, if I was La Brava, and I encountered someone that was fine with snapping their, their hands like paper mache, then yeah, I would probably run away as well. I mean, I'm completely on La Brava and Gentle's side, okay? I don't care how strong you are, if you're someone with a level head in some way, and you saw someone running at you that didn't care if their body was shattering, then yeah, I, I, I would go. I would definitely get the hell out. And so, that reaction, I, I really hope I'm not the only one that laughed at that, just the way they knew him, and they, you know, actually mentioned he was just completely mad. But, uh, leaving that segment for the side and all that, let's talk about what this chapter is about. So, Gentle and Izuku, their fight has officially begun. Now, it was getting prepped up in the last chapter, but with this chapter, it is officially underway, and my, oh my, high quality stuff with this chapter in terms of the opening act to the fight. Now, Gentle is his quirk is completely different. It way very unexpected, okay? Like, it's something I did not expect when it came to his quirk at all. I discussed in the past, like, a couple of videos back and all that, when Gentle was, you know, introduced, I talked that maybe he might have some form of quirk where he can either manipulate, like, space and time, or he has, like, a video editing software quirk to where he can cut things throughout time or whatever, cut things out and all that, kind of how he's a video creator. I said stuff like this, you know, maybe he has a quirk like that. It would fit with him being, like, a YouTuber. But that was not the case. In fact, his quirk, it, it's very, it, it's very similar to Hisuka. And in a lot of other ways, it's kind of like the equivalent of an awakened Luffy. It makes me feel like if Luffy had awakened Devil Fruit, that is what it would be like. How Gentle is using, you know, the rubber basically. Turning anything he touches into rubber. I'm like, that's what Luffy might be capable of. And I'm like, that's uh, fascinating. But uh, backing up for a second though. So Gentle's quirk is very different. I, I honestly did not expect him to have the ability or properties to turn things into like rubber and make things to where they can bounce and stuff. That that was completely unexpected. And looking at the quirk on paper, it seems very weak, okay? When you look at it on paper, just turning things to rubber. But here's the thing. If you have read One Piece or watched One Piece, then you know how crazy rubber really can be. Like you, I think everybody by now doesn't really underestimate rubber when it comes to the manga and anime-verse, or in, in the community, because of just how Luffy is in general. So, honestly, seeing rubber, it doesn't make me think that the man's weak, but looking at it, it does seem like it's weak. But, when you actually take a moment to analyze how his ability works, it's pretty OP. Maybe not to the extent of Overhaul's, uh, you know, quirk, what he was able to do, but his quirk has so many 
question. So It's so vague, and I don't really know how it completely works. Number one, we do know that he uses his hands and he turns things into rubber. Like, we see how when he was taking off his coat, he was removing it, he rotated his hands in a way that turned the air in a circular, spear-like shape into rubber. Now, from the way this looks, maybe the only way he could turn things into rubber is through small contact throughout a spear, because you see how he moved his hands and made a circle, and he made like a rebound, like trampoline. Now, this could just be one of his techniques. Maybe he just uses a technique like that, and he can do a lot more, because let's think about, I think, chapter 170. We saw how the building looked very distorted, and this is what led me to believe maybe it might have some form of dimensional warp capabilities with his quirk. Maybe he could distort time in space, but that like I said, is not the case anymore. So looking at, you know, let's say chapter 170 with the, the entire store being messed up, I don't feel like he has a very small radius, unless it was something to do with the effects of the camera. Maybe, you know, La Brava has something, you know, do with a court that can affect buildings like that, or editing, or whatever it may be. The thing is, is if that building was turned into rubber, and that's why it looks so wobbly, it's probably because he could turn big objects like that into rubber. So, it's not just a little circle he can make, he can make large buildings, which is pretty terrifying in a way. And here's another question too, can he turn living people into rubber? For instance, if he was to place his hands on La Brava or himself, could he turn himself into rubber, or will it only work on non-living objects? That, that's my big question I have after this chapter. Regardless, though, I do wonder if there is a time limit. Is there a time limit on certain things well, with how he turns into rubber? Or is it like a one-time thing? If someone hits it, it disappears? Or, you know, can he permanently keep it till he deactivates it? There's a lot of questions I have about his quirk, but even then, it's incredibly useful, and it's definitely not a throwaway quirk. It, it, by no means is Gentle's quirk a throwaway, so it's definitely very obvious that Horikoshi might have some plans for Gentle in the future of his story. But, okay, let's stop there for a second, and let's talk about, like, the the ideals and stuff going on in this fight. In a lot of ways, the way Horikoshi designed this chapter, it mainly designed us to look at Gentle as the protag and Izuku as the antagonist. Or, another viewpoint is looking at both of them as protags going up against each other because they just have no other option. They have to. And nobody in this situation is really, like, a villain. Like, it's truly evil. I mean, even though Gentle is trying to break into UA, and it is kind of a criminal act, he's not doing it to be malicious. He's not doing it to, you know, ruin everybody's day and just be awful. He's doing it to make a stronger generation of heroes. And as I've already said in my previous episode, or, oh, my bad habit, previous chapter reviews, you know... He is like a vigilante. He's the equivalent of Stain, but he doesn't go as far as Stain did. And that's kind of what I get from Gentle. He, he's a little bit more, like, gentle. You know, I'm using his name. He, he's gentle with his actions, and he doesn't want to harm people. He doesn't want to be rough with people, which I will get into his fighting style in a minute against Izuku. But seeing how he was fighting Izuku in this chapter, it's kind of like they're both fighting for their own ideals. And they're not, both sides are not necessarily... Wrong. And now, in most cases, many would want to vote on Izuku to win this, because, I mean, he's the MC of the story, so obviously many would want to side with Izuku. But at the same time, if you've been reading these chapters and you like this arc, then you're probably going to want to side with Gentle as well, and La Brava. We know his motivation. One of the big reasons is because he wants to make the world better for heroes. And another big thing, too, besides just his YouTube channel, is also to make, you know, La Brava happy, make her smile. He's also trying to protect her smile and make her, you know, proud of him. So... The equivalent to what Izuku is doing and how he's trying to make Eri smile, make her have a good time, that's what, you know, Gentle is trying to do for La Brava as well. So they both have their own smiles that they're trying to protect, which is very nice. I like the parallel with these two characters. Let's stop there. Let's talk about the fighting style for a second, okay? So, as we know, we know he can use rubber, and he can turn even air itself into rubber. And this is, like I said, a strong ability if used right. And Gentle does seem to be an incredibly intelligent individual. He doesn't seem to be a bit of a, a dumb person. He, he does seem to have a good head on his shoulders, besides him being a little bit more of a gag in certain scenes, like especially with his tea. But he is incredibly intelligent, especially with how well thought out some of the plans were to get to the, you know, the tea shop. But, um... He puts up this, like, rubber trampoline in front of him, and Izuku, 
he runs at him, and he hits it, and he goes blasting completely backwards down the street. Now, he says that it's called gentle rebound. That's what, you know, gentle calls that move. And like he said, he doesn't like to use violence. He doesn't like to rough people up. But if you look at that panel, it looks very obvious that there was a lot of violence. They even say that was an incredibly violent moment. And gentle, if you look at his face, he was even surprised about it because he never has probably seen that rarely. He's probably rarely seen someone fly back that far. The only reason why someone would ever fly back that far, if it works like rubber and bouncy and stuff, that would mean that Izuku had to hit it at such tremendous force that his own weight, his own speed and force repelled him backwards that fast, which is why he, you know, went back so quickly and why it looked so violent. It wasn't because of Gentle, it's because of Izuku himself hitting it so hard. And that is why he turned around and was like, yo, we getting out of here, he's stronger than I thought, and he started running because of how scary that was, how the man charged that quick and had that amount of strength to get back up and all that. That's why Gentle was trying to get away. So, once again, Again, Izuku being a madman. So yeah, I do like how that was kind of explained in a way, and it wasn't like deliberately like, you know, Horikoshi didn't go out of his way to kind of detail it and make sure everybody comprehended it. I think I just like the way it was show, don't tell style of that scene. Now, um, next thing to get right into, let's also talk about how he's able to fly. So, Gentle, he's able to make a trampoline. He's able to actually trampoline in the sky. He could keep using his quirk and make this air that's like, you know, where he can bounce, and he could keep trampolining up higher and higher. So, he can even fly. He, he could stay up in the air without anyone, you know, messing with him. So, if it's a hero that does have a flying quirk or something, or the ability to get up there, then he has the advantage. And this is something incredibly powerful. So, Gentle, he has the ability to create a barrier in front of him to bounce people back, but also ha he has the ability to bounce up and get higher into the sky. So this is just one property to use his quirk. He's just turning air into rubber. So when you look at it like that, imagine what else he could do. If he can even turn himself into rubber, just imagine. Just imagine what capabilities he would have. He would be the equivalent of Luffy from One Piece. Now, I don't know if Horikoshi would do that because they are in the same magazine, and I feel like Shonen Jump might have a little bit of a problem if Gentle was doing similar things to Luffy. There might be a reference or something, but I highly doubt something like that would happen just because of how I feel like it's just too similar. Maybe Horikoshi or Shonen Jump would have a problem with it. I, I have no idea. But regardless, though... I, it does make me wonder, can he turn himself into rubber? And if not, how big is his AoE? Let's talk about that Delaware Smash air gun. Or air cannon? I, I forget the exact name. Forgive me on that. But, um... Izuku. He... He did something incredible this chapter. He was upside down. And... Gentle and LaBrava were going to get away. And as he was upside down, Frell and all that, he was going to hit the ground. He had to hit the ground and all that. He decided, while upside down, to actually finger flick and hit Gentle in the back. And Gentle describes it as an air cannon. Which shows the amount of force of it. Now, it also says a lot for about Gentle for him to even withstand that and turn around and look at Izuku. So, if there is one thing we could pull from that, okay, is that Gentle is pretty freaking durable. Because regardless of it being a low-level air cannon, okay, maybe not the equivalent of All Might... It's still a pretty high level percentage just to be able to use wind pressure. So Gentle withstood something that normally would, you know, cause a lot of damage. So Gentle is not a weakling by any sense. It does make me wonder the reason why he was able to kind of withstand that, you know, air cannon was because maybe his outfit is turned into rubber as well. He could have his clothing completely encased in rubber, and that is why he probably didn't take as much damage. Regardless of whatever it may be, though, I do believe that he is probably a lot stronger than we actually imagine because something tells me Gentle in the past probably was someone violent. As I've said, my, my headcanon, I don't know if it's true or not, but my headcanon is in the past Gentle probably was some form of villain. He probably found, you know, the light or whatever, found his own path and decided to be what he is now. And just something tells me that he probably harmed someone. Even if he wasn't a villain, he probably harmed someone in the past, and he's probably made it his, you know, major life choice not to harm anybody and help out the hero society. And... 
it t it makes me wonder if he is really, really strong, incredibly powerful. I, I I'm very curious about that, and it makes me wonder just because of the way this chapter was done for him to be able to withstand something like that. And he also got pushed into the construction site, so we're gonna really find out how durable he is in the next chapter if he gets up after what Izuku did, because Izuku slammed him into a construction or a construction site. He slammed him right in. So if he gets back up after that, it's gonna be scary. So, um, let's talk about the uh, miscellaneous stuff of this chapter. So, Jiro, adorable. The, the little earplug wave and all that. Oh my god, oh my god, that's so cute! That's, that, that, that's adorable. That, that, dude, my, my heart melted in that moment. I'm like, that is just sweet as hell. And then we have the stuff with Bakugo and Tokoyami. Now, as I've already said, I love Tokoyami. Every time he's in a chapter, I, I jump for joy because he barely has any panel time or screen time, and so when he's in a chapter, I'm pretty hyped up, because he's one of my personal favorites, and seeing how he had a little bit of a moment, even if it was one panel or two panels, I was pleased. The man was playing, you know, music and all that, and Bakugo just snaps, he snaps his drumsticks, he's like, make the music more distorted, Tokoyami, you bird brain, I'm like... Like, okay, okay, Bakugo. And I, I, I like how the man looks at, like, the info sheet trying to figure out what it is on page three. He's like, oh, you like, his face is very shocked. I love that. Just, I love the little slight interactions between Bakugo and everyone else. And how nobody really takes offense to what Bakugo says. Anyone notice that? Like, you know, Tokoyami didn't get offended. He wasn't upset. He just accepted what Bakugo said, the rude comment he said. Which just shows how everybody is kind of more like a, you know, a family now. Instead of just a group of strangers together going to school. They definitely are like a family. Just for him to be able to accept something like that and move on and just try to learn, it just shows Bakugo also has definitely fit in with his, you know, friends in the school. So, um, next thing to talk about, let's also talk about the stuff with Eri. So, Eri also was in this chapter, and we get to see her, uh, her smile, and oh my god, that was... I'm glad. I'm glad to see her smile. It was definitely something that was nice to see, but I do feel like before everything is said and done, maybe that might go away because of the issue happening with Izuku and Gentle. But that's pretty much it when it comes to miscellaneous. The last thing to really talk about before I end this video is the situation with Izuku. What, what's going on right now in the world? We, as we all know, Izuku has his license. Now, it's kind of like a permit. Like, you know when you get a permit to drive? I, I'm under the impression it's equivalent of that. A permit and all that. You usually need, like, supervision to be able to, uh, you know, use your license. Like, you need to be, like, supervised by a hero. I believe. I Now, I could be wrong here. You know, you could correct me in the comments below. But I believe the, the license, you know, or, you know, Izuku has... Is basically like a permit. You, you gotta have a licensed hero there, but you can do hero activities. And if you don't, well, obviously, you're kind of doing stuff against the law. And I, I believe Izuku right now doing what he's doing is technically not following his license. Unless they make room for emergencies. Now, it's been a while since I've looked at that. It's been a while since that chapter came out. So, if I am wrong about any detail, correct me in the comments below. But I believe that Izuku is allowed to use his license in the case of emergencies. And if so, then he's A-OK. -okay. However, there's no way that this is going to be able to be secret. And he's going to be able to keep it, you know, on the down low. Because, number one... The construction site. They got damaged, and as we know, if property gets damaged, then, you know, they're alerted, the Hero Society and all that, they gotta pay damages, so it's not gonna be hush-hush now. It's already made very clear that it's beyond the realm of hush-hushing at this point, unless Izuku doesn't say anything and nobody catches it, but I mean, I highly doubt that. So, looking at the situation, I do not think that this is gonna be hush-hush, and so even if Izuku deals with it, and the festival goes on without a hitch, I do believe the principal is still probably gonna face some backlash. Or at the very least, he's probably going to get, you know, everybody's going to find out about it. And let me explain why. Right now, La Brava is filming. Filming the fight between Gentle and Izuku. Which means that regardless of whoever wins this, it's going to get uploaded to YouTube. So, everybody's going to find out. It's public knowledge at that point. And so, you can no longer hide it. So, even if Izuku didn't want to say anything to anyone, everybody's going to find out because of YouTube. It's just how social media is. And it's probably going to, uh, you know, blow up as a video. I could definitely see it's going to become viral. And which means that Izuku's reputation would boost. And that would be nice for him. And it'll also probably boost Gentle and Brava. But in turn, it would also cause negative feedback from the populace. Because a student was fighting a villain, and they were too busy with the festival instead of guarding the perimeter. So I do believe that 
even if everything goes a-okay, the video alone is probably going to spread way a wave throughout social media and probably cause problems for the principal, even if the festival doesn't get stopped. That's just my personal opinion. But uh, I want to end the video here, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And I love you guys. Please be safe. Chibi out.